What's up, dudes? Max here. It is pretty late. Uh, 1.46 in the morning. I am back from the Mortal Kombat 11 reveal event, and I have returned with a solid three to four hours of playtime. Got very lucky, and got a lot of experience with the game, with a several amount of characters. I think the most I played individually was Sub-Zero, messing around with all his different variations and moves, and played a little bit of uh, Raiden as well. But, um, yeah, quite a bit of experience, went through like a honeymoon phase, got to the entire portion where you weren't even seeing the graphics anymore, and we're just focusing on the gameplay, which happens naturally in any fighting game. So let's quickly talk about some impressions. I'm not going to go too deeply into detail on some of the mechanics because I did get some pretty cool demonstrations with the developers on these mechanics and how they work, and I want to show you guys directly because some stuff is uh, in great detail how they work and is very different from Mortal Kombat's before. And that's going to be a common theme with Mortal Kombat 11. Stuff is very different, so let's start right from the beginning. The most positive impression, this game is frigging gorgeous. I went back and I looked at some of the footage on the recording and some of the footage on stream, and even though I will be rendering this out at the highest quality possible for YouTube, it really doesn't do it justice because MK11 is probably one of the best looking fighting games ever made. They've made some fantastic strides when it comes to overall character model quality and effects. It is mind-blowing what they pull off with lighting during elements like brutalities and x-rays and not even x-rays anymore, uh, technically fatal blows as they're called. It is extremely impressive how far Netherrealm has come from the days of Mortal Kombat 9, much less MK versus DC and the games before with 3D models. It's uh, mind-blowing that we get a giant AAA fighting game and a fighting game that gets ample support from its publisher, which is Warner Brothers. And you get to see that, like you literally see where the money is going and it's going into an insane amount of polish within the way this game looks because the presentation is on another level. I absolutely love it, and I can't wait to see more because the roster doesn't appear to be that huge. There's like a mid-20s amount of characters in the roster right now. I think it's like 25 or 26 if you include Shao Kahn. So uh, there doesn't appear to be a huge roster, but I don't know if this is representative of what the final roster is going to be. We have seen this appear in several other fighting games where they show like a fake roster and then many more characters do show up. So I definitely hope that's the case, and um, in terms of presentation, I think a, a lot of people might be kind of disappointed if this game launched with less than 30 characters, especially considering, you know, Injustice and Injustice 2. Mortal Kombat X did have quite a bit of characters, especially after the DLC, so I, uh, I would love to see at least 30 characters show up by the time the game launches, and let's hope that does happen. Now, the biggest change that is happening gameplay-wise that is immediately apparent is that this game has no meter. <laughs> You do not gain traditional super meter in Mortal Kombat 11, which is uh, akin back to the way super meter worked in Mortal Kombat 9 and Mortal Kombat X. Instead, you have defensive and offensive gauges that are representative of stamina bars that you might remember from Mortal Kombat X. Uh, stamina bar regen automatically if you weren't using stamina. And that is a similar thing here. Your offensive attacks, which can be used for a variety of ways to enhance damage and get more damage, and your defensive attacks, which are used for, of course, defensive abilities, will regen automatically. And depending on which abilities you use, that affects how much of the bar goes down and how quickly it will recover, because some things like picking up a, um, I think picking up an interactable, for example, uses one chunk of your defensive meter, and it will recover pretty fast, but some other things that will use defensive meter can also use a chunk and will recover slow, so there's like a variety of recovery rates and how much they use, and whether or not they use both offensive and defensive. This is definitely one of the biggest changes to the game, and uh, I'll talk a bit more about them, but the other big thing is the fact that X-rays are technically gone. They've been replaced by Fatal Blows, which are available at 30% health or less. And I like this change. I like the fact that we're going to be seeing more X-rays in the game. That was always a big issue with Injustice, with Mortal Kombat, and all the games within the series so far from MK9 and beyond. You didn't see a lot of X-rays at higher level play because you wanted to save that meter for breakers. Um, they fixed that because there's no breakers in the game now. Much less using that Fatal Blow Super doesn't actually cost any meter. Everyone gets access to it. If you whiff it, it builds back, I believe, after five seconds. But if you use it, it doesn't come back, meaning you get only access to one in an entire match. So, 
even though you normally could get, you know, two because you hit 30% of your health bar twice, you only get to use it once during a full game. Now, I know a lot of people are going to be freaking out because, wow, breakers are gone. What the hell is going on with Mortal Kombat? Uh, this game does integrate a defensive mechanic that is similar to Injustice 2, which is the flip out. If you're getting juggled by a combo, you can spend a bit of your defensive gauge to flip out of the combo. Now, juggling portions of combos don't, don't seem to be as prevalent as previous games in Mortal Kombat 11 because combo strings and combo structure have been um, toned down from Mortal Kombat 9 and X. That is directly quoted from the developers. They toned down the combo game of this game so that you can more focus on what they kind of want the players to focus on, which is less of an aggressive play style that you might remember from the heavy running game of running into an opponent and focusing on 50-50s and stuff. In MKX, they kind of want players to play a more grounded uh, footsie-based game, and this was directly quoted from Ed Boon in a recent interview, that they want players to play this sort of intimate neutral game with each other. And that quote is very similar to, well, most fighting games have this. Of course, previous Mortal Kombat's had this, but it wasn't the focus. The, the fighting game that you can kind of quote that has this focus and specifically prides itself and focuses directly on it, is the Street Fighter series. So if there was one thing I was very surprised about Mortal Kombat taking a direction in terms of how it would approach its neutral and how it works and how aggressive it's going to be and sort of toning a lot of its things, a lot of those uh, approaches down for a more neutral heavy footsie playstyle, definitely wasn't anticipating it was going to be Mortal Kombat 11, but that is the case and it is very representative in the gameplay. Characters have uh, an aggressive amount of forward reaching poke attacks and those poke attacks are uh, what you use to go about hit confirming into supers, um, re responding to people during whiff punishes, and stuff that you are kind of used to in neutral footsie based games. Because um, right now the characters are very heavy. The character movement is slower than Mortal Kombat X as well as Mortal Kombat 9. And I don't, I, I was kind of miffed by this. I am not a huge fan of that overall decision. I do like fighting games with more mobility options. And I will say it was very interesting to see this overall take. Um, I, my impressions of it aren't completely positive right now, especially after the gameplay sessions, because yes, that is absolutely how the game plays out uh, when you are playing it. And we'll just see how it goes, because the game's not even out yet, there's not even a beta. We'll see how the eventual plan they have for the game and the neutral eventually pan out, but it is what it is. The defensive options are pretty interesting, and like I said, I won't go into full detail because I'd like to show you guys and demo them uh, as I get through all the videos and matches that I have. But uh, I really like the defensive options in this game. I think they're better than any of the other Mortal Kombat games, which had some kind of haphazard defensive options between, you know, block breakers and stuff like that. This game doesn't have block breakers, but your options while getting up off the ground between having uh, two different types of sort of universal get up options that all characters have, but they do have some variety between like horizontal and vertical. And you also have the ability to roll uh, forwards and backwards away from your opponent Meaning that if someone's trying to meaty you, you can actually roll through them and punish their meaty at the cost of a bit of your defensive bar. And I think that stuff is actually pretty interesting. There's also parries. Uh, they added something that is not, it's a parry, but it's not called a parry. It's called flawless block, and it essentially acts as a well-timed block. Right as the attack hits you, you tap the block button, and you're able to recover faster out of block. It's similar to a Just Defend in many other fighting games. It's also very similar to uh, Soul Calibur, which has these just-timed blocks that allow you to recover quicker. So the interesting thing as a result of all this, we just mentioned those wake-up options. You get the ability to do wake-ups, and even if you land those perfect blocks or flawless blocks, you can even respond with, like, counter-attacks, alpha counter sort of attacks immediately after. So if someone is being very predictable with their strings and you're good at timing, you can parry out of that stuff and attack your opponent, so it forces your opponent to be a little bit more unpredictable, which will definitely result in some very interesting high-level game. But as of right now, not many people are amazing at it, and it's going to be one of those things you'll see a lot more later on, I think. So, the defensive options I think are actually very interesting uh, in comparison to the previous Mortal Kombat's. One thing I am not a big fan of is the offensive options because they did away with the meter burn version of special moves. And instead, they you're able to amplify a special move with an additional button, meaning that 
if you wanted to uh, do Sub-Zero Slide, for example, and you wanted to meter burn it in Mortal Kombat 11, you just do the regular input for the special, and then you would press the grab button after, and he does a unique grab animation that throws the opponent around and does a bit more damage. Uh, for, and I'm not a big fan of this system right now, and even Ed in interviews has said this is kind of placeholder, and the way people are going to react to it is how they're going to change it. Um, if they want to go back to meter burn, and I honestly hope they do, because just having the moves be meter burnable is a lot better than remembering these additional inputs on top of the existing special moves for characters. In my opinion, it's just an additional, like, hurdle you have to go over, and in comparison to previous games, it worked just fine, so I'm not too sure why they changed it, I really hope it goes back to the original meter burn versions that was available in a lot of the other NetherRealm games. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. There's a few other things your uh, offensive meter can be used towards, and the, the big one is amplifying those special moves. The interesting thing, though, is uh, these meters, the defensive meter and the offensive meter, don't work like mm, traditional fighting games. Most of the time in fighting games, a meter of some kind builds as the result of action, whether or not it's like whiffing moves or attacking the opponent and they block or attacking them and they hit and you get recharged in meter. We saw this in Injustice 2 and, you know, people would jump back and start throwing projectiles in that game. It would build meter and the person would kind of be rewarded for more meter as a result of throwing projectiles. And in Mortal Kombat, you were rewarded for more meter by doing a bunch of block strings and uh, forcing your opponent into situations that were hard to block and getting rewarded as a result. So, uh, the interesting thing is that the meter rebuilds with no assistance in Mortal Kombat 11, and it's a really interesting decision because there's not many fighting games that just reward you meter over time for technically not doing anything. And that's how it works in MK11. Your defensive bar and your offensive options, like your meter burn moves, uh, or amplified moves, will rebuild automatically, and it just goes back up. So the game is giving you many reasons to use your wake-up options, to use your unique different defensive capabilities of rolling in and out off of wake-up options, as well as those amplified specials, which can lead to a lot of really crazy damage. So uh, that's, a, that's a very big change in terms of Mortal Kombat. And the thing I did notice is a lot of characters that did have projectile attacks, at least early on, uh, since there's not a ton of mobility options, you don't get a big roll like in Justice 2 or a run. You sort of get dashes, and you're able to dash cancel in this game similar to MK9, but it's not as quick or as effective as that game. Uh, the dash doesn't cover a huge amount of space, so it's more like a big step, and... That's the one thing I'm, I'm a little disappointed by. I wish the dashes would go a bit further. I wish the mobility was a bit higher for the characters. So what you get is a, a little bit of a difficulty to close the gap. And some characters have some pretty effective projectiles. And when they meter burn those projectiles, they cover big amounts of space and they do pretty good damage even on block. So you're spending a lot of time doing walking and blocking in this game. And that is a, uh, a very common thing in other games like Street Fighter, where your approach is to walk and block. So it's, uh, it's funny that that, that tradition kind of carries over to this game, and even the commentators, when they were commentating matches, were mentioning a similar thing, and I could echo that when I was playing. I was doing a lot of walking and neutral crouching to go under projectiles and approaching my opponent, and making my way in to get for mix-ups with Sub-Zero, because he has some fantastic 50-50 mix-ups that are in the game right now, that make him a uh, absolute mix-up monster, probably more than any other character in the current version of the game. So, uh, the interesting thing is that if you have those abilities and all of a sudden you've used all of your offensive meter on, you know, amplified moves, then you're going to be at a situation where you can't do them anymore, so what's the best option? Well, most players disengage, and they sort of start walking backwards, and since it's kind of hard to get up in someone's face unless you throw out an unsafe special move, People sort of walk backwards until they rebuild their amplified moves or amplified specials, and they start throwing them out. So, a lot of my time playing the game was spent, like, approaching my opponents and getting in on them, because a lot of them had better projectiles, and Sub-Zero's projectiles were pretty much, uh, <laughs> pretty much ice ball, and that's about it. So, most of my time was spent getting in, and once I'm in, focusing on establishing a mix-up, freezing them, putting them in a stun state, and going for 50-50 mix-ups the entire night, and I spent a lot of time learning that mix and figuring that out and maximizing that damage, and it was quite fun. Unfortunately, I don't have a lot of footage of it because uh, the footage was very big and we only had such big hard drives, but as a result, I, I learned a lot of the game, and that footsie approach and how it works is very prominent in, in MKX, and it's a big change compared to MK9 and uh, MKX. 
and it feels like it's a direct approach to make the game more honest. And whether or not what you consider a fighting game to be honest or not is completely up to a single person's interpretation. I kind of like my fighting games to be crazy with a lot of options. Uh, I think that ends up being more fun, and I think fun is the biggest focus for fighting games. And I'm not saying that MK11 isn't fun, I absolutely had a blast figuring out this stuff, but if I would tell you that I wish the characters had a bit more mobility options as of right now, and I wish the characters had a bit more combo options as of right now, I wouldn't be lying. But they also added a very interesting system in the game, which is the crushing blow. And this term is sort of used as an overall blanket term for a way a lot of things work, and I'll quickly break it down. Crushing blows act as a sort of mini x-ray where it zooms in and highlights the action. And that takes place on counter hit situations where if you're attacking an opponent and if you do a specific attack, if that attack counter hits in a certain way, that will lead to a crushing blow cinematic. Meaning that, for example, if you down toot an opponent and you just punch them in the air, they're, you're not gonna get a combo opportunity after and they're just gonna hit the ground. If you get a crushing blow and it's a counter hit version of a down two, they're gonna be in the air a lot longer and you're gonna be able to follow up with a couple of hits or a combo of some kind. This applies to many other types of hits that are available for a different variety of specials and moves that all characters have that is gonna take a, quite a while to learn. And what you have to do after, the system might seem very familiar because this is, uh, this is very similar to what is available in another game like Soul Calibur 6. And that's called the lethal hit mechanic, where if you counter hit someone with an attack, you get a free combo follow-up, and that's unique to that attack. But not entirely, because there's actually more to how crushing blows actually work. The other types of crushing blows come as a result of preconditions, whether or not you do a certain attack so many times, whether or not that, that attack is performed in this certain way or you know if it's on a certain part of the stage i don't know exactly all the parameters of all of them but if your special move or grab or whatever it might be is performed in a certain fashion you will get a crushing blow that will lead to a, either a variety of more damage a stun state or something like that for example uh with sub-zero if you did sub-zero slide and you meter burned it or amplified it he would do that follow-up like i said and if you did it three times on that third time, you could get the character to do an extra hit that would lead to a giant punch that would lead to a whole bunch more damage. Like we're talking this one slide would do like 35%. Same thing with Sonya's projectiles that were amplified as well. If you ended up doing it a certain amount of times and it hit the opponent or blocked the opponent or something, one would suddenly hit you and it would zoom in and do a crazy amount of damage. So. Sometimes characters that are doing these attacks, you're going to get access to a whole bunch of damage. And this is going to be the result of the way you play, the way you integrate them. And it's kind of like brutalities, like brutalities are finishers that are already in the game. But you remember how you had to set up for a brutality and sort of make sure you did certain preconditions. It's kind of like that and you have to worry about it during base gameplay. But there's a lot of them and this is where a lot of the skill is going to be in the game. Figuring that stuff out, figuring out when to apply it, how to apply it, because there is an option to uh, for the player to actually turn that on and off, whether or not you want to activate the crushing blow. And that's very interesting. Uh, I, I really dig the fact that they're giving the player the ability to activate it. That means that you can save them, because they're only able to be performed once per game. And if you save them for one combo, you can get something insane. Like if you set up for a crushing blow through a few throws, or you set up for like a slide one, and you have all of a sudden filled all the preconditions, and you're able to activate multiple crushing blows in one combo, and you, you combo that with a fatal blow, that's going to be some ridiculously hype shit. Uh, that's one of the things that I wish we had time to mess around with in our, in our, in our play session. But unfortunately we didn't, and this is the first time that I'm sort of uh, testing out a NetherRealm Studios game without the ability to go back the next day and try more stuff out. Because previously when these games were at E3, you got the first day to sort of absorb what the game is giving to you, what you've learned, and then you find out what other people are doing, how other people are playing, and you go test new stuff out. And unfortunately we don't have that, so... Even though there was some stuff in like the neutral game that I wasn't a big fan of compared to previous other Mortal Kombat's, which is a bit more... A bit more zany, a bit more action-packed, uh, and this game takes a more traditional safe approach. Uh, doesn't mean that that's specifically bad, and some people are going to like the new way Mortal Kombat plays out a lot more. I'm still saying the jury is out right now, and I haven't completely passed judgment because the game's not even out yet. 
So, I'm very much looking forward to the opportunity to play more. I have footage of a lot of these things that I'm gonna have to go through and figure out where they are. And I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about in a future video, but hopefully you guys enjoyed the matches. In the meantime, I'll be back with more impressions of Mortal Kombat 11 as soon as I can, because, to be honest, the one thing I'm looking forward to the most in this game is the characters. And the characters I'm looking forward to returning and looking as good as they can possibly be in this game. The visuals still blow my mind. I can't believe what they pulled off here. As always, guys, thank you a ton for watching. I'll be back with more updates and footage of Mortal Kombat 11 as soon as possible. My name is Max, and I'll see you next time. Fatality. Raiden wins.